Maybe it's because I'm spending a lot of time indoors at the moment, but over the past few weeks I've spent quite a lot of time thinking about windows in games. Windows are an interesting challenge to solve in game design because they're something we all recognise the function of, yet in most games we tend to avoid rendering anything behind them. After all, it's incredibly expensive and time consuming to create and design all that geometry behind something that the player is ultimately not even going to notice that much. In a lot of games in the past, the workaround to this challenge has been one of two things. Either you'd throw a simple texture back there and create a sort of pop-up background, which looks okay at a distance, but as soon as you get close, the effect of it is almost immediately ruined. The safer option, and the one I think a lot of developers have opted for in the past, has been to just make a universe full of blackout windows and mirrors. After all, if you can't see into the window, you don't need to render the geometry. Ultimately, I get this. It's a workaround that a lot of us probably don't even notice that much. We're used to seeing reflective surfaces in legacy games, and there's a sort of visual language that's evolved that something like this would represent a window. It's definitely a safe bet. But a number of recent games have been doing something new with windows. It's a technique known as interior mapping, and it's probably most familiar to you if you've played Marvel's Spider-Man by Insomniac Games. In this game, the windows on multiple buildings throughout the city are mostly transparent, and there's visible geometry behind them. It's not just using that old school cardboard cutout technique either. As you move, the geometry adapts to the view. It looks like there's an actual room back there. And that's because there is. Kind of. Hi there, I'm Matt, and welcome to Game Dev Sandbox. This is a series here on the channel where I explore ideas that I'd like to try out to better my understanding of game design and development, and then share that journey with you. If you haven't deduced from the intro already, or from the title of this video, this one is all about building an interior mapping shader inside of Unity. Ever since I first played Spider-Man, I was blown away by how good all the windows looked in that game. Recently, I was playing Forza Horizon 4, and it was while cruising through the streets of Edinburgh that I noticed the interior mapping technique was being used again here, and how great the windows looked in this game too. So I started looking into this a bit more. As it turns out, there's actually been a number of games since way before Spider-Man released that have implemented a form of this technique in one way or another. A version of this technique was actually used in SimCity 5 to add details into the building's windows. But what is interior mapping exactly, and how does it work? Well, it's basically a parallax effect achieved with a shader that projects a specially designed texture onto a surface and then maps that texture in a way that distorts the image relative to the view from the camera. It's a great way to simulate depth behind a window without the need for any additional geometry. Essentially, if you've ever worked with a cube map before, it's kind of like that. In fact, that's actually where I started with my experiment into this. I knew I wanted to figure out the basics of the shader before doing anything else, and from my initial research it seemed that a cube map was a good place to start. So I opened up Photoshop and shoddily threw together a basic cube map texture. Using labels and colours like this, I figured I could more easily see how the texture was being mapped as I messed around with things. I created a new shader graph and connected the texture up to a sample cube map node. This resulted in a world space projection of the texture onto my test cube here. It had a sort of interesting look as I moved between each face. I spent a while playing around with different combinations of the view direction and position nodes and different methods of projecting the texture based on where the camera was. I had some interesting results, but ultimately I couldn't quite figure out how to get the projection method to work properly. I definitely knew I was close though when I reached this point. This was starting to resemble the projection method, but I knew there was something I was missing. So I went back to the drawing board for a bit and looked into some references of how a shader like this is actually put together by code. Delving into the shader code that some lovely folks on the Unity forums have shared made me realize that there were a number of components that I was totally missing. I started making some adjustments to my graph based on these findings. In my closest example, I was experiencing some weird curvature that I knew needed to be ironed out. And I noticed how the sampling of the view direction was being clamped in the shader code. So I figured that might help straighten it out. I went ahead and implemented that workflow into the shader graph. I then also noticed that something was being done to the UV mapping in this part of the code that I had entirely missed previously. This ended up being the missing piece of the puzzle. After adjusting the graph to calculate everything relative to the UVs on the cube, I finally had something that was beginning to resemble a functional room. Knowing that my shader should be able to tile at this point, I reduced my scene down to a single cube. And just when I thought I'd accomplished it, I ran into a really interesting problem. Yeah, it's not supposed to look like that. Something super funky was going on whenever I increased the scale of my cube. I was really confused. As far as I was aware, this should have been working. After stumbling around in the dark trying to figure this out for a bit, 
I eventually found a forum post complaining how the sample cube map node was inversely mapping normals due to being designed mostly for skyboxes. Seeing as I had no other leads on what the issue might be, I tried remapping the normals on the sample cube map node using a normal from height node. And then, I had done it. I built an interior mapping shader in Shader Graph. The next logical step was to figure out a workflow to actually map this thing and see how it looks. I wanted to figure out how the mapping actually worked and how much of the room it would show. I know that Unity has a built-in way to capture a cube map from a camera, so I was curious if I could build a few sets and pre-render them to some cube maps to use as my rooms. I built out a quick box room using some one-sided planes to make four walls, a roof and a floor. I textured it a bit, added a couple of objects to walls and stuck a camera in the middle. I wrote a quick editor script to handle creating the cube maps. And the initial result was not great. These chairs here are looking pretty skewed and the projection seems way off. It looked all right with our initial test image, but when applying an actual cube map, there were some pretty glaring issues with the shader in its current form. I wondered if the chairs looked weird here because of how the projection worked. So I wanted to make sure they were accounting for this by flattening them up against the wall. This actually worked pretty well. Once I'd flattened them, the back wall was looking much better in the projection. But I was still getting these weird skews with the edge walls and the projection just wasn't uniform across all my faces of my cube. Some sides were flipped and others were upside down. Something definitely wasn't right here. Up until this point, I had been using positive values for the tiling and depth calculations. Staring at this upside down room, I figured why not just try to flip it by negating the tiling values. And upon doing so, my shader magically corrected itself the weird skewing on the edges were gone, and the cube map was projecting properly all of a sudden. It turns out that having the values in the positive caused the projection to move towards the camera rather than away, so they needed to be in the negative space to inset into the view. Hooray for happy accidents, eh? As you can see, I still had some issues with the room being flipped in some cases, but I remembered that the default Unity cube has rotated UVs on each face. A quick trip into Blender to map my own cube took care of that one. We got there in the end. So the cube map method seemed to finally be working and we've got the framework for mapping out rooms onto our shader. With that, I went ahead and made a bunch of rooms to use. It was kind of funny needing to squish up some of the models so that they don't extrude too much from the wall and break the illusion. I wanted to be able to map multiple rooms to the same material so that when it's applied to a building, there's some clear variation. So I made a few different kind of rooms and exported them out into their own cube maps. I then went into the shader and converted the entire thing into a sub shader so that I could assign multiple cube maps to the same material. Using a checkerboard texture, I was then able to lerp between different squares on the face to alternate between the two different cube maps. So the dark squares would show cube map A and the light squares would show cube map B. This worked amazingly and immediately looked awesome. So I doubled down and split it even more, allowing for four different cube maps per material. This was pretty good and I could easily have gone down a rabbit hole of subdividing the UVs like this but I figured four was probably good enough to allow for a nice amount of variation for now. All that was left to do now was prove out the concept. So I went through and added the material to a few quads placed behind the windows of a building and mapped the tiles out accordingly. It is genuinely really impressive to me how effective this is and how much it adds to an environment when a building visibly has rooms instead of just tinted out windows. For that final touch, a bit of post-processing and some high resolution reflection probes really help sell the effect when working with a cityscape. I definitely have a much better understanding about how all of this works now. 
In the future, maybe I'll take a look at some more advanced techniques with a shader like this, but I think this is a really great starting point. If you're interested in learning a bit more about interior mapping, there's actually a really cool breakdown on Gama Sutra from Playground Games about how they achieve the effect in Forza Horizon 4. There'll be a link in the description down below for that, along with some other resources I discovered while working on this video, if you want to explore it a bit further. Anyway, that's all for now. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to like the video and hit that subscribe button. It helps the channel grow. And if you're interested in more videos like this from me, why not take a look at one of the videos on screen now? As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.